my name is Cato Yancey, and I'm here with Rydell Tomas. And we're from Rowan University, and we're studying urban crisis in Camden. And today we will be interviewing Shanika Boucher. Miss Boucher, um, Boucher um, the first question I would like to ask you before taking talk uh, before before talking about Camden, can you give us a little background? information about your family in adolescent years? Sure. Um, so I'm not originally from Camden. I'm actually from New York City. I moved here about six years ago. Um, I went to college in New York. I went to Hunter College uh, and I went to the State University of Morrisville. I did my master's degree at University of Phoenix. Uh, let's see, anything else, anything else specific about my adolescent years you wanna know? Anything you would like to tell us? Um, I think that that would probably be the most relevant things to talk about. But um, I've been, uh, like I said, in Camden now for six years, so. Okay. Yeah. What were your views about Camden before moving to the city, and what made you move here? Um, really, um, you know, being in New York, you're kind of ethnocentric, where the world seems just to revolve around New York City because you have everything there. Um, but I had some friends um, when I went to college. I had a friend that was from Camden. Uh, he still lives here. He's the reason why I actually came down. For years, he tried to tell me about the city, how great his city was. And I'm like, man, bye. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm in the best city ever. Um, so after a couple years of him trying to convince me, telling me that they were going to do some changes in the city, and I had already saw that happening in Brooklyn, you know, where I'm from. So I thought that it would be interesting. And then I started to uh, do some research on my own and I saw that they were actually trying to change Camden or at least from the blueprints that I read. Um, and I know, you know, Brooklyn, when I was growing up, it was a lot of crime, kind of similar to Camden. Um, so I figured if they can make a change in a place like Brooklyn, that would probably be possible in a place like Camden. So that's kind of what brought me down. And I'm a political science major, so it's kind of interesting to see these things kind of unfold. Hi. Hi. You mentioned your friend. Um, I uh, would like to know how much of an influence did your friend uh, Imani Wilson have on you in regards to your line of work? Um, I would say probably a lot. Uh, when when I came down here, you know, I was looking to do something different. Um, and then he was the one who kind of put me in contact with a lot of different people. So, you know, kind of through him, I navigated different people and I started meeting people in the city and connecting with other people in the city. Um, I guess in your line of work, you, um, you, you became more interested and more focused on that. Um, what made you interested in nonprofit organizations? Um, uh, prior to me moving here, I actually worked at a nonprofit organization in Brooklyn, um, and that kind of got my interest in nonprofit. But I decided to be interested in um, nonprofit world because I was working in the for-profit world and I was doing accounting. And accounting can be very draining and it was very corporate. So after being in that corporate environment and realizing that I didn't really like the corporate environment much, my next job was actually a nonprofit organization where it was very nurturing. Um, the people there were very, very caring. Um, and it was, it was the first time that, you, that I could see that I could marry like working and doing stuff that I really like, which was always volunteering and community work. So once I was able to get paid for that, although it wasn't very much, I mean, you know, when you work in a nonprofit world, it's like your, your salary is cut in half. But I mean, I just found fulfillment at work that I didn't get in a, in a for profit world where I made, you know, a lot more money. Is economic development something you've always been interested in? No, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. You know, when I started off and, then, you know, going back to the adolescent question, I always was going to law school and that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a lawyer and I was going to save the world like that. I was going to help people, you know, take cases, you know, one person at a time. I was going to change civil rights and I was going to get involved. But um, and economic development is not unlike law. You know, that's what I found. It's kind of I have a child of my own. So that kind of changes the way that you see people and, and your involvement in the community. So coming here and I came here, my daughter was about two. So I got into economic development because I was very interested in changing this community and thinking I have a child who I can't bring outside yet. 
and I want to change that. It's like, it's not about like whether I'm going to be, it's like when I'm going to do it. It's like, this has to happen. If there's a park, we got to clean it. Um, if there's areas, if it's drug dealers, we got to get rid of them. So just thinking about that from a perspective of being a parent and then seeing a lot of other kids and it's like, there's too many kids. Uh, we have to do something for all of them. So that's how I really got heavily involved in what was happening in this city. And then economic development came after because then I found out I could marry my love for the community and my love for law and development together. Um, and then, you know, economic development is a little bit like political science in a way where um, they have all these theories about how you best make a community. And that's the same thing that political science does. Um, so it, I kind of fell in love with economic development, especially here, because it's, it seems like it's so much untapped potential in the city. What benefits came through GPC and Cooper Ferry? Um, Greater Camden Partnership, I would honestly say that I've met probably one of the best bosses I can say that I've probably will have. Um, and initially, you know, one of the things about the mature stage of, you know, when you start and you're really young and you grow up, um, realizing that the person that I work for gave me a lot of opportunity to grow and to learn, to throw myself in, gave me projects, things that I knew nothing about, gave me access, um, and then threw us right into the lion's pit, so to speak. It's like community work is like some of the hardest work you could ever do, is when you're talking to Mary Beth from down the street, and she remembers that, you know, she doesn't like the young kids being too loud on the block, and then you have somebody else up the block who their problem is, you know, the water company. So as you work with these different people from an economic development standpoint, when you have to have them working together to try to fix their community, it's not as easy as it seems when you're making the theory in the office. So he gave us an opportunity to kind of really work hands on with the community um, as, in forms of trying to develop and make it better and then come in with, uh, you know, kind of our expertise and try to show them how we could get those little small things to be bigger things to really develop their community. So I would say, you know, Greater Camden Partnership, which eventually turned into Cooper's Ferry, they decided to merge the organizations. Um, it gave me my start in economic development, knowing what I know now and about how do you um, change a city? How do you develop a city? All of the things that I would say the average person doesn't understand about what it takes, all the work that it takes. Like somebody may see all the blighted houses and say something like, why don't they just fix them? But one of the things that I learned that with the New Jersey state laws, that it takes two years to foreclose on a property and sometimes longer because you have to identify who owns the land or who did. Is there environmental issues? So all those little things. So I can work with you know, Mary now, and she can become an ambassador for me or for the organization or for her own community to try to maybe um, find out all the vacant houses in her community and then work with the city government to try to make a list so we can start the foreclosure process. So even if it takes two years, we can work with her and say, it's going to take two years, but we need your help. So like that, it's a good launching pad, I should say. Awesome. Um, w throughout our class, throughout the semester, We've been doing a lot of reading from various um, authors, such as Gillette, Chigru, and various other uh, passages. Um, we'd like to know um, about the history of Camden and its challenges uh, in regards to that. What do you think are the most challenging, uh, challenging, challenging issues confronting the city of Camden? And what do you think about the revitaliz revitalization efforts? And can you name a few? Sure. So I read Howard Gillette's book, too, which I think is a really good book and is very helpful to read if you want to understand kind of what happened here before. Um, and then it helps you figure out when you get here, maybe why the city is in the state that it's in. So what I think is some of the most pressing issues in the city is education um, and underemployment, uh, um, local sourcing, uh, not enough um, businesses or people spending enough money in the businesses that exist within the community um, and then not hiring people but you know as a person who's working in the city now who are hiring people locally uh, the skill gap so I know that there's a lot of organizations and I've talked to them they want to hire locally but the problem that you get with the skill gap is there's only a certain level of jobs that you can hire them for. So if we're talking about fixing the city, you have to be, be able to create a middle class base of people who can afford the housing that we're trying to redevelop right. um, and afford to spend some money in the stores that we're talking about creating and understand um, the education system that you put in the city um, and what that means. So I think, you know, like if you fix education, if you start to have a quality education, then um, 
the kids that actually graduate on level and in a comparison to their counterparts and maybe like Cherry Hill or Mount Laurel, as you build that up, you'll be able to sustain a middle class and you can probably keep people who have the skill gap who would be able to uh, make the achievements that we need in the city. But like I said, um, now if I was doing something, it would be focusing on jobs because families need money to be able to pay for resources that their families need to eat. If, if people are hungry, they're not focusing on education. Um, they're not focusing on um, anything productive, you know, crime heightens. So I think that as people have money to be able to do little things that they like to do, then you can see crime go down. You can see investments like we've seen. So um, you asked me about now what I see going on. I think that the mayor has done an excellent job um, in attracting new businesses to the city by working with elected officials on both sides of the fence. And I know that that's not easy. Not saying that I've always agreed with everything that they've ever done um, and some of the ways that the policies have shaped, but I do realize the position that she was put in. So I don't, I can't say that if I was in her shoes that I would do it any better or do it any differently. I think that um, in the position that she's done, she's done an excellent job at attracting what I think is gonna be like the tipping point. I think that the city has been waiting for a tipping point, And I honestly can say that I think that this mayor has helped us get there with a lot of different people. Yes, I agree. Something positive just happened on the news. I'm not really sure of the name of it, but I've just seen that the mayor was involved in a business coming back here, providing new opportunities. Some kind of something just opened up and it was like a ceremonial type thing that went on. Yeah, I think it might have been today. So I don't know if they were celebrating Subaru. So Subaru is coming back to the city. Yes. They're leaving Cherry Hill and they're coming here. The 76ers is coming here. Mm -hmm. Whole Tech is coming here. Um, that's that's awesome. You know, it's like shining a light on the city and then we don't now, do you believe these companies coming within the city will open up jobs for the average person living in Camden? So to me, that's where the gray area is, right? The gray area is uh, most of them, if you read the way that it's written, there's nothing that's going to make them. Um, when the 76ers come, they're coming with 200 employees, so there'll be 50 jobs out of the 250 jobs. So there's nothing that mandates that they have to hire people from Camden. I know that they're probably going to be pressed to hire some people from Camden, but it depends on what types of jobs they'll be, right? So I'm going to assume that most of those big jobs that we want people to get are going to be filled. So we, if we get 50 vendors, um, so from where I stand, that makes a difference because there, there are people with jobs, but I think that that's the way that you can make anything look good. So my hope is that it's not a glitz and glamour move, that the people who are going to come out of those 50 jobs, we're going to get some jobs that are going to take people out of poverty. We know that an $8 an hour job is not going to do that. So if they're coming here to supply... $58 an hour jobs, and they really haven't helped Camden. If they're coming here to supply some of those jobs that are gonna move people out of poverty, then I would say yes, absolutely. Um, same thing for Subaru, same thing for Whole Tech, which I think Whole Tech, that's their ultimate design. So I'm probably, although the way that the news wrote it was that you know Whole Tech is gonna be the larger cost for us, I guess for the state, but it appears that the jobs that they're gonna come with are gonna be jobs that are gonna remove people out of poverty. And when I say that, it's just like income levels I'm talking about. Right. Tax breaks and all those benefits. Right. Um, we know that you're very involved in community um, outreach and community organizing. Um, we would like to know what made you decide to uh, host a, a, peach, a peace march and what were some of the benefits resulting from that peace march? Woo. Ah, you know, it's, it's, so that was probably one of the most emotional events that has happened in the city. Um, like I said, I have a daughter. Um, and actually, I think that day my daughter was home and I remember we had probably met as a community group a few days before, um, probably maybe like two days before and talked about what we were going to do. And then two days later, we hear that this girl was shot and the night, that night she died. So it was kind of shocking. It was at a corner store. She's 17 years old. Um, and she was just going to get something to eat. And I just thought about it being... You know, the moment that I heard that the shooting happened, I just thought about like everybody, you know, my brothers, they're young and everybody was home. So, you know, you call home and you want to make sure everybody is safe. And then just to find out that, you know, a kid died because they were at a store and people were shooting broad daylight, school time hours is very scary. So that at that point, it's like to not do something just just doesn't make sense. It's not a matter of why did I get involved? It just seems like you couldn't ignore it. And it was like a call to just say to everybody, like, we want our kids safe. Um, can you guys at least lay down the guns long enough to make sure that kids get home from school? If you're going to kill each other, please don't do it during school hours. You get what I mean? It's like a call to just common sense, I would think. Um, afterwards, I would say for a while we had a lot of police presence. I would honestly say that that brought a, brought a lot of police presence. 
we stayed on top of that for over a year until we were able to suppress some of the um, the violence that was happening um, right in the city. So I think it worked. Um, I would say that it worked because we brought a lot of groups together. We tried to do it another peace walk that it wasn't as successful, but um, that first one was really successful and. And the community, we were able to get rid of some drug dealers and sets that were causing some of those issues. Absolutely. Um, and it, it paid. It, it made people pay actually a lot more attention to this neighborhood. So, I thought that that was something that so was like really. A call to action. It was. It was kind of a call to action. Absolutely. Thank you. And we started providing um, activities for the youth, actually. So that was one of the things that we identified that was missing. So you know, as a result of some of that stuff, you know, now we have the gym the gymnasium and then the park. You know, we got fencing and stuff like that around the park. We took down barbed wire, we put up fencing, we did a whole bunch of things to, you know, again, increase safety measures in the community and the neighborhood for children. Okay, well I believe this speaks to the question you basically answered upon the conclusion of the march that you feel any real sense of urgency for a call to action. Definitely. I mean, I still do. I don't think that thing, like we're completely out of the woods. I mean, right now what I feel like what I've seen in my neighborhood is that it's, it appears that kids feel safer. Like I saw them playing over the summertime. So I think that, you know, what the Camden County PD has been able to do is bring, um, bring kids back outside. Um, and that's because, you know, crime is down. I know that there are some people who will be like, no, it's all a sham. But I mean, I literally, I've seen it. Not that there are not things that are happening. There's probably other places like burglaries are up. They broke into my house, so I know burglaries are up. I know a lot of people have been burglarized this year, but one of the things that's down is, like the, like I said, a lot of the drug activity is down. I drive by every day where there were drug sets from the time that I moved here. Um, they're no longer here, and they've been gone, and that's important. So that means that kids are playing outside. Even my daughter, you get what I mean? Like There were times where it wouldn't have been a second that I would have let her outside out of my sight where... You know, like there's been times that I just let her do stuff that I did when I was a kid, like go outside and play with the friends up and down the block with a bike. So I think that the more that that happens in the city, then yes, um, that whole peace march, like I'll do a thousand peace marches if we can make sure like all the kids around the city get an opportunity to come outside and play with each other. So. Okay. Well, 10 years from now, do you see real significant changes in the city of Camden? Um, if so, can you tell us how you envision the city? Definitely. I, I think that, like I said, I've been here six years and I've seen significant changes in the city already. Um, and that goes from brick and mortar stuff. Like there's a lot more developments up in my neighborhood or across the street from my house. There was blighted houses. There's that's no longer. I can walk for at least three to four blocks without seeing, you know, a row of abandoned homes. You may see one or two. Um, I see more development people coming in. It looks like more businesses are trying to come into the city. Like I said, I see kids outside playing. Um, there's more of a relationship with the community and the police officers. Um, I think you have a lot of different groups who are doing stuff. I think that there's some changes even in education, regardless of whether people believe that they're gonna work or not. Something has happened, like everybody's aware that there's something that needs to be done. So I think um, there's gonna be several changes. And I think if the good things that they want to happen, again, like I said, economic development, political science is all about theory. So. If the theory works, <laughs> I think that, you know, within the next couple of years, you know, and 10 years from now, I see a big turnaround from Camden. The only thing that worries me is if the indigenous population will benefit from the change, right? Like it looks like the big change in cities has been gentrification. So that's the only thing. I think it definitely will be different. 10 years from now, I believe that Camden will definitely be on the map. It'll be a place that people will think about coming to instead of running from, so. That's my okay. prediction. Okay. How do you see the school system working? <clears throat> um, in 10 years, I think that the state um, under Governor Christie has a really watchful eye over what has been happening and they're investing in seeing results. If he goes to a different office, who knows um, what will happen with the next administration. But I believe that a lot of people are watching education and trying to make some changes. Um, to me in the city, there's always been a level of accountability missing. I still see that missing. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what will happen with that. Hopefully um, some of the charter schools that they have here will make a difference or um, some of the private school operators. But as far as the traditional educational system, I mean, I haven't seen, I don't think, as much of a change, even with the state takeover. I think that the big change is, is that they actually listen to the community a little bit more. Um, I don't know if the schools are changing. Um, and I don't know if the school system can really handle 
what's going on. And I think it's beyond the school system. Like they can't just teach. The kids come to school with a lot of trauma that they experience from home. So the schools are not just teaching kids, you know, they, they have to deal with so many different things. So, but my hope and prediction is that even that'll change. So it won't be where it needs to be or should be, but I think that kids will be better off than they were maybe now. From now, I'll give it five years. I think that they'll be better off. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sure. It's really good to see that somebody's um, trying to make a change and trying to make a difference. Oh, no problem. Uh, what else will you do, right? Like you're here, you, you might as well get involved. Absolutely. You might as well get involved. Yeah, well, thank, thank you guys. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I nice really appreciate you. it. Nice to meet you. Thank you.